Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. This is going to be another raid Shadow Legends video. So guys, I have been playing this game for 20 months. And this is going to be the first fusion that I ever have skipped. Um, and I'm going to tell you why. I'm also going to tell you the champions I think are better than this legendary in the mix. And uh, I'm also going to just throw it out there straight away that, with a warning that... People that have skipped these legendaries in the past have had egg on their face in the future. And I'm just going to give you a couple of examples of that because I don't want to push people down a road and then they decide not to fuse a champion and then that champion becomes really great. I'll give you an example. Stu Gaming decided not to fuse Rotus because it looked like a really hard fusion, not because he didn't think the champion was good. He just wasn't up for it. Wasn't up for doing it. Rotus became the most broken champion in the game until we got nerfed. So that's one example. Another really good example is Foley. Foley, when he came out as a fusion, was super hard to get. And most people kept him in the vault for a long, long time. Um, when he got a buff, he came out of the vault and is now top two arena nukers in the game. And a lot of people will not have this champion because they decided not to fuse him at the time. So this warning is, don't necessarily do what I say. Um, but I'll tell you why I'm not going to fuse this champion. So firstly, firstly, this champion is nowhere near like other festive fusions. And, um, and I think she's way too situational to be worthwhile. I really do. I think, I think compared to other legendaries in the game, she's going to be in the bo bottom 20, maybe. Um, very situational um, places where she can actually add you some value. So out of the 11 new champions, because you've got a lot of champions which are the same here, out of the 11 new champions that you have to grind to fuse her, I actually think seven bring more value than her across the game. I think seven for the average player are going to be more useful than this legendary. Um, and I'm a bit upset actually because I saved up a ton of resources on the free to play because I thought, and I'm due to give that account away, but I saved up a load of resources on that free to play account because I thought, right, we're going to go for this festive fusion and, and try and get a nice champion for whoever I give the account to. But honestly, I don't think it's worth it. And they've bought out, and the other thing that's annoyed me was they've bought out a ton of other good epics and legendaries here. But they didn't make him the fusion. And I feel like that's just a bit underhand. Like normally the festive fusion is the best one they're bringing out. And there's much better legendaries, void legendaries that have come out at the same time. But they decided to go with this one, which is pretty rubbish. Um, I'm going to give you a bit of good info before we get into the kind of nuts and bolts on this stuff. If you want raid gems, come to hellhades.com and enter the advent calendar and you will get a chance to win them today. That's happening right now, today. Anyone can enter. You don't have to pay. You don't have to like sign up to something. You do have to submit an email, um, but all of those just get deleted, so we're not going to capture all your info and stuff. But if you want gems, hellhades.com. I'll link it below. Come and get involved. So let's talk about why she's so bad. Let's just have a quick look at her kit. I've done gone over to some detail of this in the past. Now, her base stats are all good. Her base stats are all good. Now, what that means is, if they buff her kit in the future, she could quite quickly jump into a top tier legendary. That's the watch out. That's the watch out for this stuff. But A1 is actually fine. I don't mind the A1. The A2, increased defense and continuous heal. Five turn cooldown. Um, then attacks all enemies under three. So we've got a kind of, we'll only attack if this has happened. Now you think to yourself, well, okay, well, she's obviously going to freeze everyone first then, so she can do this. She doesn't. The freeze mechanics I'll show you in a minute are very hit and miss, um, and she weakens those enemies under freeze. Now, quite honestly, I think the only way you get true value out of her is if you bring another freeze champion in before her. Then all she's doing is placing a weaken. You may as well just bring someone else in that's going to do AoE weaken, AoE um, decrease defense, and forget Pixniel. I don't think this ability is strong enough to be worthwhile. Um, you've also got this five turn cooldown, books to four, loads of books, loads of books. Uh, she's not like crazy books, but she's got plenty here. Seven, 
10, 13, and she really, like, she gained a lot of value from the books. So you're talking 15, 16, 17, 18 legendary books, and she kind of needs them to get any sort of value. So 18 legendary books is what you're going to have to invest if you want this, this chick to do anything. We're talking here, five hit at random. Let's say the average team we face is four, four or five people, right? So five hits at random. Each hit's got a chance to freeze. So you could freeze on all of them. If you booked her up 50%, you could freeze on all those hits. If she double hits, it's a 100% chance to freeze. Chances are you're freezing one or two enemies with a legendary champion. Now, I'm not being funny. There's so much better out there already that do this. So much better. Luria as an epic has got just as good a chance to freeze people as she has. Um, Shiromani does his tons better. Gergo does it tons better. Like, it's, it's really weak effort. It's a weak effort. I feel like this top section here should be like 75% chance to freeze. Or um, it's just a straight AoE and it's like, seven, uh, I don't know, 50% chance to freeze, books up to 75, forget this double hit mechanic thing. I honestly think it's a weak, weak A3. Now, I don't know how, how hard this hits for. It might hit hard. If it hits hard... Kind of who cares really because it's hits at random and hits at random are not useful when you're trying to either nuke somebody down or take down everyone. So for me, average A3. Um, and then we've got this, this debuff. This is probably the most disappointing thing for me because I think she's been built to help you take down Sorath, the, the Frost Spider. So 35% if you book her out. And don't forget, you've got to get 18 books to def you know, definitely get this to happen. 35% chance that when someone else is frozen, she takes the freeze instead. I like that mechanic. I think it's a cool mechanic. It's different. But 35% is not enough. One in three chance that she takes it. If you book her, one in five chance, if you don't book her out, that she steals that freeze. You know what? It's way too RNG. Even at 50-50, I'm still not that happy about it. It's still too RNG. That your whole team is still getting frozen. If she takes the freeze, you've then got, if booked, 40% chance to get a turn meter fill. Uh, and when she gets a go, if booked, 50% chance that the freeze wears off. I'm not being funny. It is just nowhere near good enough. These percentages need to all go up. If these percentages all go up and something happens with this A3, I feel like we've got a champion. But at the moment, this champion for me is weak source. The only place I can see her being played, honestly, right now, is if you're trying to get through waves in Doom Tower or anywhere, really. Any wave control, she'll bring you some wave control. But that's not what her kit's meant for. And there's better champions. You know, Seal of the Drakes does it a lot better than she does. So, for me, I cannot see anybody, unless you are literally like a really new player, I can't see that you get value from this champion. And if you're a new, really new player... I think you get more value out of the epics than the rares, and that's what we're going to show you next. So there are seven champions that I think bring more value than her. And I'll go through like my favorite through to my least favorite, but I think that there is, depending on, on what you need, seven. Now, I really like the look of Gerhard. Gerhard the Stone, I think he has got a cool looking A2, which can be a single target nuke. He has got a really cool passive, which is so relevant right now, where there's passives going around, sleep, stuns, all of that sort of stuff, freezes. He could genuinely help you get through some content, help you in the arena. Um, and as long as he hits hard, which I don't know yet, I think he's actually going to be a really cool epic. So Gerard Stone, I think, looks better. Um, I actually think a lot of people will get a lot of value from Dagger. But I need to say this again. Look at how many books this Dagger needs. 16 books and she needs them you need this debuff chance for that decreased defense you need the debuff chance for the decreased attack i don't know what they're thinking i don't want to smoking when they're releasing this patch but or this patch this group of champions there's so much requirement for books it's disgusting actually it's pretty disgusting rare books are very hard to get now rare books are hard to get all i can advise if you are struggling for rare books is that you use your Arena, 3v3, um, gold tokens, and you're buying books as often as you can. That's all I can suggest because 
it's very difficult. You get some in events and stuff, but I mean, let's have a look. I've got events dropped right now. Dungeon Divers, one rare book here. You get them from these sort of places. And honestly, you do need to book these champions out to get the most uh, utility out of them. Let's see if there's any in, in this one as well, quickly. Spider, no rare books. It's epic. No rare books here. Like, throw a rare book down the bottom here. Give people a chance to get them. Because we people need these books. Anyway, I think once booked out, she actually is a useful champion. I think she's definitely useful for this faction if you don't have Stagnite. So those two, I think, probably bring more um, more sort of genuine um, steel level than, than what we've got from, what's her face? Pixneal. Tiger Soul. You've got three chances to win Tiger Soul. Really, really strong base stats. Great A1 when booked. Okay A2 when booked. Average A3 when booked. But this A1 makes her a very viable poison champion for clan boss. However, 3, 6, 8, 10, 13, 16, 19 books. What are they thinking with this book requirement? It's actually ridiculous. It's ridiculous, but I think she could be a good champion. Um, next one then, who I think is going to help a lot of people out, is this rare gear grinder. Gear grinder is looking awesome for faction wars for this faction heals revives the book requirements not as bad here you kind of do want a couple of books in this revive potentially but i think he can help a lot of people get through the Ogryn tribe faction wars um we've also got pig sticker who is genuinely i think he, uh, she could be pretty strong for the scarab boss in doom tower Destroy max HP here. Destroy max HP here. Both of them booked to three turn cooldown. Reasonable stats. Her defense is low. Heal reduction here as well. It's kind of neither here nor there. But again, we've got five, nine, 13 books there. So a lot more books again. It's not crazy that one, but it's still quite a lot. 13. Um, we've then got two dwarves. I like both of them. So we've got the rare who Kurzad. Decrease speed A1. Um, Turn me to fill a two and then a decreased defense and an increased attack. The only champion in the game that's got this as a buff. And I think this is going to be really strong. So, but again, look at this six, seven, eight, 13, 18 books. Why? So many books for these rares. It's actually insane. But I think he could be pretty cool. I think he could be cool. And I really like the look of Ragnar as well. Ragnar, I think, is probably the most interesting champion that they've dropped. That isn't a void legendary for me. Um, leech ability here. This kind of shield. Turning your HP into shield ability here. I think this looks really cool. Can't remove the shield. Um, and decrease defense and, a, and weaken on an A3. Four turn cooldown. But you get to, you get to these abilities quicker. Because you... Um, yeah, because of this passive. So every time he's losing health, his cooldown on his, on his A3 reduces. I think this is a really cool setup actually i think again you're going to need to book him his books are not so ridiculous but for me if i had to pick one person other than this legendary it's going to be rugnor rugnor is my favorite um but i also really like this epic here gerard so there you go guys for me it's the first fusion since i've played the game that i've decided to pass on uh, i'm not saying you have to do that or you should do that i'm just giving my views on why and I've already fed back that I think the book situation is disgusting. Um, you know, new players, old players, whatever, they don't have these books lying around. I do have the books lying around for rares and stuff because of, you know, doing endless clan boss when we used to get them all the time. That's gone. We don't get them all the time anymore. So newer players are going to struggle hard on that. Anyway, guys, let me know your thoughts in the comment below. Don't forget to enter the giveaway on my website. Up in hell, Hades. I'll catch you later.